So in terms of these scanners that FLIR develops uh, and that use thermal imaging to take temperatures right now, how does the technology work and how accurate are these scanners? Yeah, so we've been developing this technology for over 41 years. And since the SARS outbreak in 2003, have used it for just this application. In its simplest, uh, all living things radiate heat. Uh, while not seen in the visible light spectrum, it can be seen in the infrared spectrum of light. So we're able to capture that image and display it and, and come up with an absolute temperature at distance. It's very accurate uh, to point half a degree Celsius. Yeah, of course, you just mentioned this deal with General Motors, which says it's going to deploy a total of 377 FLIR scanners. There was a report recently that sent shares of FLIR higher that Amazon uh, may also be a customer for this technology as well. In general, looking across industries, looking across sectors, as economies and businesses look to start to reopen, where are you seeing the greatest demand? Can you keep pace with the demand? Well, this is really unprecedented. As I mentioned earlier, for 17 years, we've been providing this technology, but typically to ports and borders, airports, uh, trying to screen for people coming through customs that may have a virus. If we look at SARS, N1H1, Ebola, all of those events together don't compare to the demand that we've seen now. And from customers that we wouldn't have expected, you mentioned General Motors, uh, as well as a host of others, hospitality, factories, as they want to return to work. Uh, we've got a tremendous amount of capacity. We've made some investments to increase that. Really, the biggest governing factor is our supply chain. And in fact, General Motors is helping us leverage their supply chain to alleviate some of those points of constraint. Jim, hi, it's John Ford. I'm wondering, do you think that thermal scanners are going to become uh, standard equipment in warehouses, maybe even in retail? Uh, do you have a sense yet of how normalized these scanners might be outside of some of the military and, and industrial uses that you're used to? Well, again, defense and industrial applications have been our core markets. We think it absolutely can be a, a, a key technology to help people feel safe returning to work or into public places like sporting venues or otherwise. But we're also very keen to highlight the limitations of the technology. And we've seen all sorts of claims of late that, that aren't true. Like all technology, it has limitations and it cannot diagnose or detect the COVID-19 virus, but it can tell you very accurately if you have a elevated skin temperature and screen for those risks. Yeah, Jim, we've seen, uh, in terms of the markets, we've seen the defense sector and some of those names that are levered to the defense sector, even just this week, whether it's L3 Harris or Lidos or Raytheon Technologies this morning, um, hold up and see that type of business uh, relative to other types of businesses uh, remain pretty stable right now. You're a sizable defense contract yourself just this morning announcing uh, an award, a contract from, from the Army for unmanned aerial vehicles. How is that part of your business um, going right now? And what is your outlook as, as we head into the rest of the year? Yeah, you know, we're unique in that we have both industrial and defense technology applications. And if we look at the business on whole, uh, those parts of our businesses that have more commercial orientation do see significant uh, headwinds. Of course, technologies for elevated temperature screening, lots of demand. But the defense segment uh, is, is doing quite well. Uh, the military continues to work on modernization efforts that are a priority and are working hard to make sure that companies like ours uh, continue to develop those life-saving technologies. We're very proud of that recent award of our, our nano drone, a 33 gram drone that really has amazing capability to keep our warfighters safe. Yeah, and finally, just to go back to the thermal cameras before we let you go here, how much does one of them cost and how quickly if someone calls you up and says, I wanna put this into my movie theater, for example, how quickly could that process happen? 
Yeah, the price points right now are between $5,000 and $15,000. They can be integrated into enterprise operating systems. Um, right now, we still have a lot of capacity, but it takes between days and weeks perhaps to get it as we want to prioritize those most important customers first, uh, hospitals, other uh, industries that are critical for operation. Uh, but in the coming weeks, our capacity will be expanding ex exponentially.